Hello and welcome to another Roblox scripting showcase. In this video, I'll be showcasing two versions of a hover car that I made using Roblox Studio. So I'll go over the design process as well as the code that goes into making these things work. And if you guys want to get these models for yourself, I will have links in the description. So make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and let's get started. So before the hover car was a hover car, it was a basic Roblox vehicle. And this uses a vehicle seat and some basic wheels and whatever. And I tried implementing this in one of my games and it didn't work that well. I don't know why, but something happened. And so I decided, eh, whatever, might as well turn it into a hover car. So what I ended up doing is designing using the same car model, but just flipping the wheels, making them face downward. And obviously that one's a little bit different, but that's the second version. And I just added a little thruster on to the back. So the way this hover car works is pretty unique. So basically what it does is it, I define a specific altitude that I want it to maintain, and it tries its best to maintain it. And it doesn't use C-frame, it doesn't use an align position or a body position to just I just set a vector and it just stays there I just use some basic vector forces and some angular stuff like a torque or an angular velocity but that's more for turning and stuff like that so let me just play this and we're going to go to the first iteration of the car this is the first iteration the blue one the orange one is the second version of our hover car so it basically this car just casts a ray from the bottom this little part right here to the ground and using that information i can determine where i want it to go from that point so if i were to go to my infographic this gives a little bit of an explanation basically you have our car you have the point at which it casts a ray so it shoots a ray downward it detects the ground and this is the distance to ground and then we have our hover height which is a fixed number in my case it's 10 studs so i want my car to be levitating 10 studs above the ground so i have a formula that basically calculates how much the car should adjust to reach the hover height so in this case it'd be going up the net force would be going upwards and depending on how close it is to the ground the force will be greater and this also works in the opposite direction. So if our car is above the hover height, then the net force will be downwards. And also there's this little extra factor, but this is crucial to the whole thing. It's the inertial dampener. So basically what this does is it, it's always counteracting the velocity of our car. So this basically means is usually if I were to just do this, just leave the net force no dampener the car would go up and down and just keep on bobbing but using the dampener it steadily slows down the car so if we're to go back into the game let me just show you that real quick if i were to get into my car and if i were to hit something and if i go back down you can see it almost touches the ground and it goes up and i push it back down and it just keeps on going but it slows down so it's sort of like a spring just losing its energy so now let's go into the code and see how this is working so i'm going to go into the first iteration of my hover car it's hover car mark one and let's just take a look at the code so basically what i'm doing let me actually zoom out is i have a render or a run service dot stepped event and this fires every frame before the physics simulation. And this is where we adjust our hover height. So basically, first thing I do is I have this detect range variable up here that defines how far we want the ray to go below the car. And we cast a ray from our base of our car downwards. And we check if we hit something. If we didn't hit anything, we just turn off the engines of our hover. And this hover is a vector force. And so this is the thing I was talking about earlier. This is how we calculate offset. Because basically what I do is I 
give our hover vector force anti-gravity so this basically gives it zero g base get mass times workspace dot gravity gives our car no upwards or downwards gravity influence and we multiply this by our offset depending on where the car is so we can influence it to go either up or down and then this code right here is basically just for the steering i'm using a vehicle seat so i can access seat dot throttle and seat dot steer so this basically thrusts it forward or backward depending on where you press and this just rotates the car along the y-axis and then this is the real crucial thing of our hover car this is the inertial dampeners for both like normal movement and rotation. So I basically just take the velocity of our hover car and negate it. So it's going opposite direction. I multiply it by a damp multiplier, which in this case is 10 and the rotational damp multiplier is one. And this just helps give, give the car a sort of realistic, first of all, it gives it realistic air physics. So it slows down because of presumably air friction but it's just a dampener and it also helps it hover a lot better and then this is just visual effects like the fire that comes out the back of the hover car let me just show you again so basically when i press forward so fire comes out the back which is pretty cool looks pretty nice and yeah so you can see all these things in action it's pushing up i can turn with a and d w and s just forward backward and it balances out by itself but there's one other crucial thing that i had to do and that is making the player massless so there's a property on every base part in roblox let me just grab one called massless this basically means if the part is welded to another part then it won't affect its overall mass and this is crucial since i'm getting the mass up here so basically what i do is I set massless to true when a player sits into our seat and then when they leave I set it to false in case they need to do because like the player is player is pretty heavy in Roblox and all of the parts of our hover car are set to massless other than the singular base part and so this allows us to have a very like realistic hover effect so if I were to demonstrate what would happen if you weren't massless let me just hop on over i missed the jump again that's embarrassing but if i don't get in a seat and i just kind of stand on it you can see it gets weighed down a lot and it actually really can't lift my weight but if i get in it says me go massless and it can just do whatever so this is pretty cool and i can just drive around and do whatever so that's the first iteration of our hover car so the first hover car was pretty good but i wasn't satisfied because i thought well there's only one ray going from the middle of the car to the bottom why can't each of the wheels because the wheels look like they're pointing out they look like they should be the ones making the car over why shouldn't each of the wheels have their own ray and their own vector force and that's, exa that's exactly what i did with the second iteration of our hover car so I use the same stuff same technology as the first hover car the only difference is that i have these hover engines and each of them has a thrust and each of the rays that the car has point in a specific direction and that direction is from the bottom of this part of each of these parts and the difference between this and this is that this one had a ray that always pointed down these rays don't necessarily have to point down so if I were to rotate it, the rays would point sideways, and basically wherever the fire is pointing would be where the rays and thrust would be pointing. This allows me to get a cool quadcopter effect when I go forward and go backward. And turning is the exact same, but it looks really cool. Only problem with this is that it struggles a lot to climb terrain. Both hover cars struggle to go up terrain but this one a lot more since it's always angled down when you want to go forward but it still has a really cool effect and i like it so now let's just go into the script the script is fundamentally the same other than the fact that for each hover engine 
I divide their overall force by the amount of hover engines and I use a torque object instead of a thrust to move it forward. So I just pitch it down and yaw is the exact same. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a lot of fun to make and I'm glad I could share with you. So in case you're wondering, there will be an uncopy locked place in the description where you can take this little area I've built with the terrain and the little obstacle course sort of thing over there and you can use it for yourself. And there'll also be the models that you can use. Feel free to put this in your game to do whatever you want with it because it is super cool and it's really fun to play around with. But other than that, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Comment any questions or suggestions down below. And comment if you want to see a tutorial on this. And I hope you guys have a nice day. And goodbye.